Hallelujah. Shall we lift up our two hands to heaven tonight? Again, let's magnify the name of the Lord for the privilege to be in his presence. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we have given thanks. The secret things belong unto God, but those things are revealed, they belong to us and to our children after us. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. I'd like you to ask the Lord, I must return with definite kingdom secrets tonight. You see, every secret revealed changes a man's position. Stars in the kingdom are made by secrets. Lord, I must return with definite kingdom secrets tonight. Go ahead and pray. I must return tomorrow morning with definite kingdom secrets in my hand. I must return with definite kingdom secrets in our hand, my hand. For unto us is given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God. But to those that without all these things are in parables, I must return with definite kingdom secrets in my hand by the morning hour. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Every child of God is entitled to kingdom secrets. For unto us is given to know the mysteries simply means the secrets of the kingdom of God. The secrets. It's our right in Christ. But to those that are without, they look like mere stories. Furthermore, the Bible says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. He will show them what their part is to commit him to his own part. That's simply what it is. For the Spirit of God searches all things, yea, the deep things of God, and they are delivered to those who love him. Is there a lover of God here? Every lover of God is a candidate for access to divine secrets. Every genuine lover of God. So it's your right. You must return in the morning hour with definite kingdom secrets in your hand. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Please get seated. prophetic focus for the month is faith makes heaven on earth a reality. Can we say that together? Faith. Say it convincingly. Faith. He said, don't you ever say in your heart, oh, we go to heaven, that is to bring Christ down 
or go to the deep and to bring him up. But what said he? The word is nigh thee in thy heart and in thy mouth. The word of faith which we preach. So it is the word of faith that makes heaven real on the earth. That's our writer, scripture for the month. Romans chapter 10, verse 6 to 8. The word of faith makes heaven real on the earth. So operating by faith makes heaven real on the earth. And that is God's agenda for us as a commission this year. Our year of heaven on earth by divine agenda. But it's important for us to know that um, every prophecy is a pointer to what belongs to us. For the Lord of hosts has sworn, as I have thought, so shall it come to pass, and as I have purposed, so shall it stand. So every prophecy is the unfolding of divine purpose divine purpose. Every prophecy is the unfolding of divine purpose, divine plan, divine agenda. And they are ordained for delivery. But we need to understand the process of that delivery. And that's why we're going on tonight on this series, engaging the prayer of faith for fulfillment of prophecy. Engaging the prayer of faith for fulfillment of prophecies. A revelation of what belongs to us, though very vital, but it's not equal to its delivery. So we need to understand the process of the plan to the delivery. We must understand that process. Every prophecy is the unfolding of divine plan as it concerns you. The unveiling of divine agenda as it relates to you. But the process demands one that to believe it. For blessed is she that believeth. For there shall be performance of those things which we are told are from the Lord. So, it's not enough to know what belongs to you. You must believe it. Because that is the only way to commit God to deliver. Blessed is she that believeth. Luke 1 45. For there shall be performance of those things which we are told are from the Lord. Our faith commits God to make it happen. So faith commits God to deliver. But it is the prayer of faith that actualizes the delivery. What actualizes it? The prayer of faith. For he that has kept receive it. So it's not enough to believe it. You must demand for it. Praise God. Matthew 7, 7, and he that seeketh, find it. And to him that knocketh, the door shall be opened. You have discovered what belongs to you. You have committed God to deliver by your faith. Now you make demand to actualize the delivery. And that's where the prayer of faith comes to play. It's yours. You believe it. But you now have to make demand for it on the altar of the prayer of faith. Matthew 21 and verse 22. The word says that and all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. So your receiving demands, he asking. And you are asking, believing. 
then you actualize in delivery. Can I hear your amen? Okay. That's why many prophecies lie fallow in the lives of many. Because they are only celebrating their knowledge or revelation of that plan and celebrating their faith in God for his delivery, but they are not making demand to actualize it. So it stays on there. He said, you have not because you ask not. James chapter 4 and verse 2. So it is this demand link that is missing. It is this demand link that is missing. Why prophecies lie follow in many lives. In Mark 11 verse 24, whatever you desire to see delivered, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So the delivery actualization always demands that you demand for it. So, so you can't say because I believe it then it must come to pass. You make demand on the altar of prayer of faith and then it comes. Now, in a moment, just imagine that 50% of the prophetic word for the year comes to pass in your life. I mean, just imagine that first. That 50% of that package comes to pass in your... Just imagine that 50% of this. Whereas, every statement here is ordained for full delivery. Full delivery. But not without you and me taking our covenant responsibility for its actualization seriously. It's vital. What is prayer of faith? We had it mentioned here. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. James chapter 5 and verse 15. The prayer of faith. And from the teachings of Jesus, we discover in very clear terms that it takes faith for prayer to be entitled to answer. So every prayer that will ever be answered must be a prayer of faith. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Every prayer that will ever be answered must be a prayer of faith. Whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. You don't believe, you won't have them. And all things whatsoever, you ask, believing, you shall receive. So it takes faith for any prayer to be entitled to answers. That's why those who despise faith only get wearied and worn out on the prayer altar. It takes faith. Revelation entitles you and me to his attention in prayers. He gives attention to us when we ask anything according to his word. He heareth us. But to answer us we require faith. Praise God. To hear you is one, to answer you is another. So it takes the prayer of faith to be entitled to answers on any issue that you take to God in prayers. So what is prayer of faith? 
What does that mean? One prayer of faith is praying according to the will of God as contained in scriptures. Praying according to the will of God. Believing. And the will of God is the word of God. It is praying with scriptural revelation of why God must answer our specific prayers. Praying, believing the scriptural revelations of why God must answer our specific prayers prayers why God must answer our specific prayers in Isaiah chapter 43 verse 26 put ye me in remembrance come and let us plead together Declare thou that thou mayest be justified. Now let me know why I must answer you. Come tell me why I must answer this prayer. In 1997, our last daughter was accosted by the spirit of death. You see, you don't prepare for this in the day of battle. Because if your strength fails in the day of battle, then your strength is small. Proverbs 24, verse 10. Prayer was prayed. There was no visible change. But life was pining away. And then... They carried the daughter of the prophet out of his house to the hospital, dying. And the prophet went to work and had a good chat with the staff in the devotion and got to his room and locked up. And I said, Lord, there must be a way out. Everybody said, There must be a way out. <laughs> God's word is the way out of all our woes. God's word is what shows the way out. Of all our struggles and with a smile not with a groaning Jesus there must be a way out and revelation resurrected the word of God came alive with force I'm he that was dead and behold I'm alive and I live forevermore and I have the keys of hell and of death he said, I'm holding the key in the favor of my children, not in the favor of my enemies. I am in charge of life and death, not the devil. From he himself partook of flesh and blood, that he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. For I will contend with them that contend with you, and I will save your children. Now you see, with those four powerful scriptures, Revelation 1:18, and then he Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 15 and then Isaiah 49 24 to 26 fire came down what came down fire. Satan has no right to determine how long you live and because every disease has its root in the devil it's an oppression of the devil that means no disease has a right to determine how long you live. Every disease is destructible. Glory to God. Every disease is destructible. Disease was going to terminate the life of Ezekiah. Go tell him he will not come out of that bed, but he will surely die. He should set his house in order. He said, no, remember now, O Lord. That's prayer of faith. Remember now, O Lord. And God said to Isaiah, get back to him. 
have added 15 more years to his life. The power of the prayer of faith, even over death. And death is the last that the enemy has got. He said, The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. First Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. That is the last card of the devil. And prayer of faith will molest it. That's the last card of the devil. And the prayer of faith will conquer it. Can I hear your amen? amen. Praying, believing scriptural revelations of why God must answer our prayers. In Isaiah 41, verse 21. He said, produce your cause and bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Strong reasons, strong reasons, strong reasons. The prayer of faith commits God's integrity to answer our prayers. God has no choice. He cannot deny himself. Whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. It commits God's integrity. Ye shall means it's a decree. It's not a promise. And ye shall have them. So every authentic prayer of faith is entitled to answers. Every, because God's integrity is committed. And we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Let's look at some of the demands of the prayer of faith. To pray the prayer of faith, the first demand is labor in the world. You labor in the world to be effective on the prayer altar. The prayer of faith demands that we labor in the world. That we labor in the world to discover the reasons why God must answer our prayers. We have to labor in the world. The first demand is that we labor in the world because faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God on any specific issues of concern. The reason why many are weak in faith is that they assume faith. Faith has to be consciously cultivated and not assumed. Faith cometh on any issue by hearing and understanding the word of God. Faith cometh on any issue by hearing and understanding the word of God. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 10 and 11. We see that word come to life. For he that has entered into rest has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. And he said in verse 11, Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest of faith, lest any man should fall after the same manner of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Now you see, it takes faith to enter into your realm of rest. But it takes laboring 
in the world to arrive at faith. It takes laboring in the world to arrive at faith. It takes committing yourself to a tireless search. A search until a discovery is made. A search until you find what you are looking for. Let us, therefore, labor, lest anyone should fail after the same manner of unbelief. Lest anyone should fall after the same manner of unbelief. So it takes genuine labor in the world. There is a demand to labor in the world for anyone to be effective in praying the prayer of faith. Second Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself a friend to God as a workman that will not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Applying the word accurately where they apply most. You know, you are, you are not guessing, you are not going joining scriptures. You are on target. You have the weapons on your fingertips and you can deal with it. Now look at Paul the Apostle. 2 Timothy 4.13 He said, The cloak which I left with you when I was at trust, when thou cometh, bring with thee. And the books, and especially the parchment. Now see, you never find any faith giant who is not a study addict. It is our addiction to the study of the world that builds our faith. And what was the resultant effect? We are told in Acts chapter 24, verse 14, that in the way which they call heresy, so serve I the God of my fathers, Acts 24, verse 14, believing all things. Believing what? His labor in the world has brought him to the realm of faith which he describes as believing all things which are written in the law and the prophets. And what has that brought about in his life? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4.13 So it takes quality labor in the world to be effective in praying the prayer of faith. He got to a point believing all things. His faith capacity has been built to be able to handle anything God tells him. There are things God tells you today, you can't dare them. Because your faith has not been built to that point. Can I hear your amen? I mean, for God to tell you he's going to build this sanctuary in one year, you need some level of capacity of faith to handle that. Even if he hits your mouth, you won't say it. You just... No, I can't handle that. Glory to God. I mean, to confront a university project for seven months. And now the day that they will resume. And construction is starting in March and it will resume in October. Wow, who are you? Believing all things. That's what quality labor in the world engenders. Believing all things. It's not just the Bible. Now, listen to me. If all I was reading was the Bible, I would be less than one tenth my level today in faith. It is learning at the feet of the masters of faith. Come on now. Learning at the feet of the masters of faith. He says, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? We are in our fathers have trod and walk in it. And you find rest for your soul. You encounter faith. That's what it means. But he said, we will not walk therein. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16 and 17. 
So it is learning at the feet of the fathers of faith that opens you up to new fiesta of revelation. So it's not just taking your Bible and reading whether you understand or not. These are people who have been sent according to scriptures for the perfecting of our faith. For the work of the ministry. You know that in Ephesians 4, verse 4 to 8, they ascended to heaven and gave gifts unto men and some apostles this for perfecting of our faith for the work of the ministry. Till we come to the fullness of the stature of Christ unto a perfect man. So there are these giants in the kingdom that are ordained to as instruments to perfect our faith, to open us up to the things that God has shown them so we can also see it. Somebody's blessed. Somebody's blessed here. We must labor in the world to be effective in building, I mean, in praying the prayer of faith. Number two, we must labor to build our faith. There are two different things here. The word preach to us was preached to them, but it wasn't, it didn't profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that hear it. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2. So we must consciously, on the basis of those revelations, build our faith to a point that it becomes a way of life. It becomes what? A way of life. Consciously build our faith. Not being mixed with faith in them that had it. And how do we get that done? You see, meditation is a stimulator of faith. God said this because he has it and it's available to me. And as you ponder, now you see in 1 Timothy 4 15, he said, Meditate upon the things you have read. Give thyself coolly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. What that means is this if it didn't profit them because it wasn't situated in them, meditation is a platform for consciously mixing your faith with the word for your profiting to appear to all. So if you put Hebrews 4.2 and 1 Timothy 4.13, it's clear. That it's not enough to find it. You must grind it. You must squeeze the treasures, the Jewish in it, until faith comes alive in you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Somebody is attacked on his health. How do I approach it? Remember, you, your brethren in the wilderness are referred to as the church in the wilderness. And God was their healer. Exodus 15, 26. I am the Lord that healeth thee. And remember this God says, I am the Lord, I change not. He was the healer of the church in the wilderness. He remains the healer of the church of the New Testament. Can I hear your amen? amen. So God is my personal physician yes, and is the ultimate in any form of reverence. God is the ultimate. So my case is different. I have God as my personal physician. Can I hear your amen? Amen. And when he sent Jesus, among other things, redemption covers my physical salvation. Redemption covers what? It, because he is also the savior of the body. So it's not only your soul that is saved. At redemption, your body is also saved. Can I hear your amen? amen. Surely, he has Born our sicknesses and carried our pains. Isaiah 53, 
and verses 4 and 5. Surely he has borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Now, grief there means sicknesses. Sorrows there mean pains in the original text. So he has borne our sicknesses and carried our pains. So we are to live a sickness pain free life. And that's a state of divine health. And what is believe that report? What do you do? Just believe the report that somebody has borne your sicknesses and carried your pains. Isaiah 53 verse 1. Who had believed a report and unto whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? You have to believe it to see the hand of God perform it. Until you believe it, the hand of God cannot perform it. He has borne my sicknesses. You speak to your body. God, I thank you. Because in Christ you have borne my sicknesses and carried my pains. Body, hear me now. He already has borne my sicknesses. So you are in Lega here. He has carried my pain. You are in Lega here. Now you see, you get to a point you believe that report, it becomes your way of life. That's what I saw when I said I cannot be sick. He says, stop saying that. I, I will say it forever. If I stop, stop saying that, the enemy will have his hand upon my life. And in Matthew 8, verse 17, as it's written, himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. That's still defined to the same scripture. So he already took. He already took. We have been bought with a price, so we should glorify God in our body and in our spirit, which are the Lord. First Corinthians six twenty. You have been bought with a price. There's a blood price on your life, so sickness is a leg in your body. He paid for a healthy living for me by His blood. So I've been bought with a price. My body must glorify God. And in First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, he said, By his stripes, ye were healed. Come and say, my case is settled. Ye were. Before the sickness came to attack you, your healing had been established. So the sickness has nowhere to rest because you are conscious of the fact that your case has been settled. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Those are your strong redemptive reasons for living a super healthy life. I therefore decree that this day marks a turning point in your life. Somebody believe that. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. You see, the deeper your understanding, the stronger your faith. Come say, the stronger my faith. Okay. The deeper your spiritual understanding of the truth, the stronger your faith. And the more effectual on the altar of prayer. Now let's come back to what we're dealing with. Example of prayer of faith that resulted in fulfillment of prophecy. Now listen to this. Israel by divine agenda was to remain in captivity in Egypt for 400 years. You say, why? I don't know why. Amen. Genesis 15, verse 8 to 10. He said, it shall be there for four generations, and after that, I will bring them out with much substance. With 
Genesis chapter 15. We go down to verse 10. Oh, let's go to 13, please. 13 and 14. And after that, I will bring them out. They shall be afflict them 400 years. Very specific. Come and say 400 years. I'm sure they discovered that writing. And the captivity was getting only stronger and not less. So they cried unto God. And God said, I've seen the affliction, I've had their cry, therefore have I come down. You see, until God had their cry of faith, because it takes care of faith for God to respond, he didn't come down. And they were there for 30 years extra. How many years extra? What if they didn't cry? Cry, They will be there forever. Because the scriptures cannot be broken. Exodus chapter 3, verse 7 to 10. God cornered the man Moses. And the Lord said, I've surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I've heard their cry by reason of the taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. And he said, And I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. In response to their cry, I have come to fulfill my prophetic agenda. If they didn't cry, they'd be there forever. Remember the word says in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. This charge I commit to you, my son Timothy, according to the prophecy which went before thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. So every prophecy will lie dormant, except we engage the prayer of faith to facilitate its fulfillment. Every prophecy will lie dormant except we engage in the prayer of faith to facilitate its fulfillment. Every prophecy will lie dormant. Every prophecy will lie dormant. Every prophecy will lie dormant, except we engage in the prayer of faith to facilitate its fulfillment. God never stepped in until he had their cry of faith. In Exodus chapter 12 and verse 40 to 42. Or let's go straight to 42. I mean, okay, 40. He said, And the, the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years of resistance. 30 years of the forces of darkness saying, No way, you will not go. Now, listen to me. Every prophecy is, according to scriptures, a great and effectual door. This is my plan for you. Now, but in 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 9, he said, A great door and effectual is opened unto me, but there are many adversaries. So that's where 1 Timothy 1 18 comes in. That we war a good warfare to enforce fulfillment of prophecy. To do what? To enforce fulfillment, to enforce fulfillment of prophecy. We war a good warfare to enforce fulfillment of prophecy. That's a classic example. Now, a prophetic word came and said, I hear of there is the sound of abundance of rain. There is a sound of abundance of rain. Powerful. First Kings chapter 18 and verse 41. There is a sound of abundance of rain. 
there is a sign of abundance of rain. Then he went to the mountain and cast his head between his two knees and began to open the heaven in prayers. The prayer of faith, and the Bible describes that very effectively in James chapter 5, verse 16 and 17. Powerful. He said, is there anything in the sky? He said, nothing. He said, go check seven times. The prayer that must be answered. There's a prophetic word, but it was facilitated, it was facilitated on the altar of the prayer of faith. Then it came to pass. So check those items one by one on your personalized prophetic declaration and pick the ones you are interested in and begin to war a good warfare on the altar of the prayer of faith. The prayer with scriptural reasons why God must answer. The prayer with, you know, biblical revelation perspectives that you believe in. Please, in this first segment, let's recognize first and foremost that prophecies more often than not will require engagement in spiritual warfare to be fulfilled. It's not enough to understand it, the plan of God for the season. It's not enough to believe it. We must make demand for it on the altar of the prayer of faith. This is going to be your most adventurous year. Therefore, go ahead and make a project of every prophetic word that is of interest to you. Make what? A project. A project to see these things fulfilled. A project to see these things fulfilled. Now that the man, um, Ezekiah just simply said, Remember now, O Lord, the testimony of the integrity of my heart. Glory to God. But they that serve you, you will bless their bread and water. You will take nothing away from them. The number of the others will fulfill. Remember now, O oh Lord, how I've been serving you with a pure heart. And make good your promise. And say, Elijah, this boy has caught me. Go back and tell him I've added 15 more years to him. You know why I cannot be sick? A faithful ambassador is entitled to son health. Sir, I'm serving God with every bane inside me. I have nothing hiding anywhere. There is nothing hidden anywhere. And God knows. Your testimony can stand for you in the day of trouble. It stood for Ezekiah. It will stand for you. Is somebody really there? This is your hour. Yeah. Prophecies will only be fulfilled as you undertake the process here listed. There's a demand to labor in the world. There's a demand to labor in building your faith. Mixing your faith with the treasures of the truth available to you. And the prayer altar is the altar of actualizing the delivery of what belongs to you. You must not miss it this year. You must not miss it this year. You must not miss it this year. I'd like you to look at this publication and tell yourself, this is God's free offer for me for the year 2015. I refuse to play careless with my inheritance. My inheritance is precious to me. This is my inheritance package for the year 2015. This is the set year for all this to happen in my life. This is the set year for all this to happen in my life. This is the set year. He visited Sarah according to the set time that God has given. Sarah conceived and bear his son and called his name. Isaac, for God has made me to laugh. God, I am set for you to make me to laugh on every item listed in this publication in my life. This is my year of change. 
It's my year of new beginning. It's my year of turnaround. I am set for you, Jesus. I'm set to see prophecy fulfilled in my life. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name. Well, hear me. The good news is this. God who had Israel and brought them out, we hear you now. God who had Israel and brought them out of captivity, he will hear you today. You believe it? Let me hear your loudest amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, everybody. Glory to God. According to 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. As powerful as faith is, it only delivers in the hands of the redeemed. It only delivers in the hands of the saved, the ransomed of the Lord. Until one is saved, he's not a candidate to wield the weapon of faith. So wherever you are this night, you want to give your life to Christ, you want to be born again, you want to become a child of God, you want to experience the reality of new birth. You want to live a victorious life by operating the mystery of faith. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you right now. Jesus is Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Outside and inside, wherever you are tonight, you want to give your life to Christ, you want to be saved, Please stand to your feet, and God bless you as you do. Stand to your feet. There are also people here in this service tonight that need to rededicate their life to Christ. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Christ, may I request that you stand to your feet also. Maybe you are once saved, but at a point certain things went off, and then you also took off. But tonight he has brought you back to bring you in. So wherever you are, please stand to your feet. You want to rededicate your life to Christ tonight, please stand to your feet. You want to have a new beginning with God tonight, please stand to your feet. You want to reconnect to the fountain of life tonight, please stand to your feet. Some more, wherever you are, please get up on your feet so we can pray together. Every one of us standing, please make your way to the nearest eye to where you are. Some officials are there waiting for you to receive you. And they will pass to you some information material, which we need to fill out. We are going to pray in a moment, and I believe that God is restoring you tonight. God is establishing you in the faith tonight, and a new dawn comes upon your life tonight. I'd like us to begin to prepare because I'm going to pray right now. Each one is going to pray if I were you, because we're talking about uh, engaging the prayer of faith for fulfillment of prophecy. And I've given you some examples. So you take your uh, prophetic declaration item, uh, publication, and point to anyone that is of utmost importance to you and then begin to organize your faith to deal with it and take delivery of that aspect. This is ordained to be a concern free year for you. Amen. Where every day is ordained to be Christmas. Amen. So you, you have what it takes. You have the right to destroy concerns yes, because the Lord will perfect all things that concerns you. All things that concerns you all things that concerns you. So this is your year. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, revelation is powerful. Here came a woman that had no womb. And the husband was crying and all that at names in, 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 in Bukru Jaws. And then um, the Holy Ghost came on me and revelation busted from heaven. Amen. And I said, hello, woman, husband. God is the soul and future of man. And he maintains a huge spear part store. Otherwise, when we pray for the sick and he give them brand new eyes, he either has it or he stole it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is he that has made us know we are ourselves. So he knew there's a thief in town, so he has reserved spare parts mm -hmm. to replace whatever has been stolen. Mm -hmm. Now your womb has been stolen by the wicked, he has spare parts to replace it. Mm -hmm. Now, in the name of Jesus. Lord, replace this part. Give this woman a child. That was the end. Nine months time, 
she came forward with a baby boy. That's how powerful revelations can be. Please understand that you are serving a God that never lies. It's not a man that he should lie. So get ready to pray. Get ready to pray to the delivery point of that particular prophetic agenda in your life. Everyone standing, please bow your head now for prayers. Lift up your right hand before the Most High God. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud. Lord Jesus, I accept you tonight as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm born again. I'm restored. I'm saved. I'm a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you tonight with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all satanic assaults from henceforth in the name of Jesus. And may the same grace that I brought you in tonight preserve you for life. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Please submit those cards to the officials that are standing with you and then we're ready to fly. Shall we all rise to our feet? Everybody. Glory to God. How many have been enlightened? How many have been illuminated tonight? How many know what to do to bring the word of the Lord to pass in their life? Lift up your voices to heaven and then begin to praise every point of interest to you. My God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. By two immutable things which is impossible for God to lie, I have a strong consolation as I fled for refuge and lay hold on eternal life. Every threat of death around your life must be swallowed up in victory. You now know that Jesus has the key of hell and of death. Not witches, not wizards, not sickness, not disease. Therefore, I shall not die but live and declare the words of God. Negative medical bodies notwithstanding, I shall not die but live and declare the words of God. Nothing dies in me or around me this year. Somebody's praying. It is not just prayer, but the prayer of faith that comes. It is the prayer of faith that comes. It is the prayer of faith that comes. It's my turn around here.
Thank you, Jesus. Come on, go ahead and pray. Hallelujah. Give him thanks and praise. Lift up your hands and give God thanks for answer prayer. Wave those materials before the Most High God is gone up to the heavenly places. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. It is done. Prophecies in the years past have come and gone, and with little or nothing for many to show. But this year, every item of interest to you in that publication shall be delivered in a grand style give the lord the big hand of praise and get seated If you know that your faith is growing, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. It is testimony time. My breakthrough time. Please, if you hear your name, quickly come out to share your testimony. Brother Okafo Amarachi, Brother Joseph Okwa, Mrs. Mafo Christiana. Obasui Osaze, Sister Adenike Adeleke, Sister Adenike Adeleke, Obasui Osaze, Mafo Christiana, Joseph Okwa, and Okafo Amarashi. Let's clap for them. They are coming. They are coming. I believe as you key into these testimonies, tonight your own testimony will be delivered to you. You will be the next person to share your testimony. Let's clap for them as they come quickly to share their testimony. Hallelujah. Place your name and straight to the testimony. My name is Mrs. Ma for Christiana. I thank God for what God is doing in my life since I joined this commission. When we had the last one night with a king and a one night, uh, feet washing, Papa said, if you cannot speak to God yourself and you cannot receive your testimony, it's left for you. And what I noticed in this commission is that they will ask you to pray yourself. Nobody is laying hands. On anybody and I told God that you God I did that when I joined this commission last year at the first feet washing that I joined and you healed me of 15 years also I'm here today that this problem I've been facing since 2011 it that is even even worse than issue of blood God as I will remove my leg from this water you should heal me and God did so this sickness, the water will be dropping from my private part. Even if it's dropping for two months, I will be using tissue for that two months. That all my body will peel. And I will be going on by that with that tissue. Even that same day, I came with tissue. And I spoke to God of David Oyedepo, and he healed me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Right. My name is Obasi Yosaze. I want to return glory to Almighty God for what He has done in my life. 
Uh, I joined this convention in the year 2014, at, at October. So ever since my life from my secondary school, I've been a, a DC Crit Court of 18. Even on my admission to university, uh, Yabatek, uh, running my admission, they even initiated me to other IR uh, confraternity. So ever since I've been trying to come out of, even my spirit was not arrested. I've gone to several shows like three times. If I did after three months, I will return back. Two months, I will return back. So that day, uh, someone asked me to come to church with them. I went. After an ambassador asked me to swear something in the Bible, I swear. I said I should not come back. And I came back. I went back again. So before it, I went, before I know it, I got sick. They took me to three hospitals here in Lagos. Then later, I took me back to Benin. So I was there. My father is the one who believed in spiritual powers, abolished. So they tried. Many doctors came to our house to, like, tell us something, do something. Nothing worked out. But God came in a vision and, like, healed me. I said, you, I said to, don't go back. Go straight. And he touched me. And those things went off. And they asked me not to go back. My dad asked me not to come back to my house back in uh, Praise the Lord. The summary is that he was delivered from occultism and this strange illness was healed. Let's give God a clap offering for that. Hallelujah. Heaven on earth. I joined this commission in 2014 and uh, my name is Joseph Okwa. I joined this commission in 2014 and uh, during the last uh, one night with the king, when we did the feet washing, the church I was going before, the pastor told me that your mother has every one of you inside her stomach. And except you pray that she dies, none of you will be successful. So after that one night with the king that we did feet washing, the night after that, I slept with my wife and children on the bed. And I dreamt. And I saw my mother. She was going up and down going up and down struggling she was not comfortable at a point she stood and she do that and mm, pushed and i joseph as tall as i am i came out i was so scared hallelujah for 32 years he was held stagnated but after the last night where they came god delivered him hallelujah Heaven on earth. Fellow citizens of heaven, my name is Okafa Marachi. I've come to give all the glory to God for change of levels. During the last night with the king, 2014, I prayed God for a change of levels for the place I worked. So when Papa was praying final prayers to five, during the closing prayers, he said, it is your week of surprises, and I grabbed it. So during that, the next week, my cousin came back. I was like, there is a vacancy somewhere. But when he went there, they had done interview. I sat, and he was even telling me that. So when he was telling me that he appointed someone, then I told him that that position was mine. So I wrote application and gave him to go and drop. When he went there, he dropped. They called me. Amara, when will be convenient for you to come for interview? I gave the date. I went there, they asked, when will it be convenient for you to start? I told them. They said, well, how much do you intend to collect? I told them. Then they said, okay, if it is not this amount, what will you do? I, tell them no. I told them not to call me. I waited one week, no call. I waited two weeks, no call. On the third week, I was called and asked to resume with two times my salary. Praise God. I'm Princess Adenike Adeleke from Living Faith Church, Okeuniti Oshogo. I want to return her glory to God. Because Shiloh 2014, when Papa said we should bring our Shiloh sacrifice, I said, God, am I dropping a car or a house? So later, Papa now said, no, no material is financial. So I empty everything I had home and abroad. So my son was like, ah, mommy, I said, forget, you know Bishop Oyedekpo. And to God be the glory today, uh, as I'm standing here, in this year, 2015, I have traveled out of the country 
two wives. I'm now an international woman, a businesswoman. And secondly, somebody called me and said, what do you want? I said, I want to go into business. How much will you need? I said, I don't know. Because this person happens to be an Akagon. And this person gave me times 20 of the money I was expecting, two plots of lands. I want to return all glory to Bishop Oyedepo. Daddy, RMO, and my pastor in the show, Pastor Lumi, where Emmanuel. Hallelujah. To the miracle worker, let's give him a shout of hallelujah. When I call him, he answers me. When I call him, he answers me, oh.
Almighty Father, receive all the glory. Our Father, make us receive all the praise. For to make the truth and receive all the glory. And adoration forevermore. Oh, from January, you have been good to us. We have come to give you all the praise. Oh, Lord, we say, be thou exalted. Receive adoration forevermore. Father, to you.